What I'd like to do uh, before we leave is, is the very last thing was a crash course on statistics and a crash course on visualizations. And since it's past five, it would be entertaining to do these as lightning talks where I, I do spend five minutes on each and then that's it. Yeah. You can stay and do discussions, but I don't want to uh, force you to be here any longer than that. So. You're uh, going to do two lightning talks? Two lightning talks, I think so. I'd better get my watch ready because this, this is going to be uh, this is going to be fun. All right. I'll get a timer. <laughs> no, I I've, I've got a timer, actually. Uh, I don't trust your timer. I've listened to you talk before. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, very wise, very wise. <laughs> okay, so the, I need the clocks, like the mission control clocks on the back wall. <laughs> okay, so statistics. Let me just make this a bit bigger. This, statistics is an entire universe, and I feel like I know a fraction, so maybe a lightning talk is actually appropriate. It's, what I'll go through just very briefly is some basics. The, for the first two topics, it may seem really, really, really obvious, but I do teach performance classes, and for some people, this is genuinely new. And so, why we care about statistics, quantifying performance. So, to understand performance of a target, there are two ways. Observation-based and experiment-based. Observation-based, I pick a reliable metric, which is why we care so much about picking good metrics, and then I estimate the performance gain from resolving the issue. Managers need to understand this so that they can pick where to put engineering resources. So for example, an application request takes 10 milliseconds. Of that, 9 milliseconds is synchronous disk I.O. If I configure to use a cache and eliminate it, I can basically make things go 9x gain or 10 times faster. Very simple math that we should all be able to do. This is actually new to some people, but it shows that uh, when I'm working on an issue and I've quantified it, this is, this is how I can explain to management the return for, of investment. These, that does not work for many other statistics or metrics types we use, like IOPS. If I propose a change where I'll change the disk IOPS from 100 to 10, I can't tell you how much faster that will be for the application, because it might be 100 sequential going to 10 random on a rotational disk. This is why we care so much about latency, because we can do math like this. This is a little speed up law. We can do math like this, because we've converted various metrics like throughput and IOPS into a common unit of currency. Experimentation basis where you apply the fix and then you quantify before and after using a reliable metric. A lot of us do this, very simple. Try it, didn't work. The actual statistics part, averages, we commonly use arithmetic means, which is the, the sum of values divided by the count. There are various other means that might be useful to be aware of. There's the geometric mean, and that's the nth root uh, of multiplied values. And the example is where Say I've got a TC, I, this example from Jane was great. I have a TCP IP stack. Engineers have told me the percentage of improvements of each layer, and you want to calculate what is the average uh, improvement when they work in unison. Uh, and that actually turns out to be more suited for a geometric mean. A harmonic mean, uh, the example I put here was if you're transferring 800 megs, the first 100 megs will be sent at this rate, and the remaining at a different rate. How do you figure out the average rate? So there are particularly different types of averages that can help for those sort of calculations. Averages over time you do see a lot, uh, and it's really important to understand the duration of all of our statistics, so whether they're per second averages per five seconds or five minutes, because uh, quite often I've seen performance issues where people are looking at five minute CPU averages, and it's only 80%, but they've redlined at 100% for a long during those five minutes, it's just been averaged out. Uh, and Theo has discussed, and I've mentioned it before, at what point do we go within the second? Because one second roundup is too long. Decayed average, that's what you see with things like load averages, this uh, one, five, and 15 minute load averages, they're actually exponentially damped moving sums. And the, they weight recent history more than past history. Standard deviations, percentiles, and means, we need to understand these. This shows a normal distribution. Mean is the average. Standard deviation shows you variance. I've put max and min on either side, and 99th percentile. The median, which isn't drawn here, is the 50th percentile. And so that's the value that is in the middle of the distribution. It's interesting to compare the mean to the median, because the median is a robust statistic, and the mean is not. And the presence of outliers or a tail will drag up 
the mean away from the median and so that you know that you have a non-uniform distribution. I mentioned, I'm just going through my books it's very quick to do this. Coefficient of variation is, can be a better statistic than the standard deviation because the standard deviation by itself can be a little meaningless but a coefficient of variation is, is where I express the standard deviation divided by the mean. That way I can compare variance between entirely different data sets and I can I, I, I have turned them into a common metric. Multimodal distributions, it's important to, to be aware that they exist. This is a production server where I've got disk IO latency as a histogram and there is the average of the mean. So multimodal, multimodal distributions we need to be aware of, they mess up a lot of, of these summarize, summarizing statistics that we use. Uh, and then outliers I'm going to show in the visualization summary next. Visualizations! <laughs> so, I'm going to have to have a, a sip of water. I won't penalize you for the sip of water. Excellent. So that was a five minute crash course on statistics. But of course there's a universe, the textbooks, it's, it's, it's great, although you can spend a lot of time. To give you a crash course on visualizations, uh, I'll just go through this. This is visualizing device utilization. I've already moaned about it more than once today where I don't like average CPU utilization as an average across multiple CPUs because it can hide imbalance. And to demonstrate it, I took a server, and I'm actually, this is MP stats so I can see, multiple CPUs and then the uh, utilization per server, and then I'm just colorizing the text output. That's actually 300 servers. But I explored different ways to look at this data set, including wireframe models, which are kind of interesting, but uh, I wouldn't actually pick that as my first priority yet. It's good to experiment with. What I want to get to is line graphs. So this is one server, 60 seconds, and doing each individual 60 of the 16 CPUs. And that is not very useful. And it doesn't scale, and, and Kesky's already said this, we have problems of scale. There's a busy server. Here's a server that's uh, mostly idle. There's, an, a, there's 5,312 CPUs, so that doesn't work. Uh, and it's, what certainly doesn't work is doing the averages. And so there's the average for one server, the max and the average. Uh, max can tell me that I have one CPU at 100%, but if I'm doing this for an entire data center, the max is going to be 100% all the time. It would be pretty boring. If I did the average for an entire data center, it would be like depending on your data center, maybe 15% all the time, which would be pretty boring. Uh, ternary plots and then heat maps. So with a heat map for device utilization, we've quickly looked at some latency heat maps and, and Theo had um, some examples in Sakonis. I think all devices should be done as a, as a heat map as well, where on the y-axis we have utilization from zero to 100%. That's the passage of time. The number of components you have at that utilization level is the darker the color. And so I can see this is actually 5,000 CPUs and it has scaled, it's fine. Most of my CPUs are down here, they're idle. Uh, and then I've got a line at the top at 100%. So some CPUs have maxed out. Uh, and I'm using, so I first put the heat maps into a Sun product a long time ago and we've now uh, been putting them into many different products. It's uh, heat maps for device utilization, latency, and also sub-second offset. Sub-second offset. I didn't load up. Subsecond offset heat map, I mentioned uh, in the statistics talk that I just gave you that we don't know when within a second is too long. And so with a subsecond offset heat map, it, we, we don't know if rounding up to one second is too coarse. With a subsecond offset heat map, what I'm doing is for each second, I'm painting a stripe like a raster. This is showing CPUs that are, that are online and active for a server. And I can see that, it actually wrapped here, CPUs went completely offline for 800 milliseconds. If this was a line graph, I would see a dip, and it would hide the fact that for a duration, all CPUs had stopped. So that's what it's doing. The, the y-axis is the offset within the second. And there was a different application that was running, and that was the shoe that fits, which showed that that application blocked the earlier ap application. Another type of heat map, it's called subsecond offset heat map. Uh, this is what I'm using to go within a second and see patterns and activity that, that are changing. 
And then the other visualizations, I came up with this thing called frequency trails so that I can show a lot of data at once. And I did a couple of, it's basically a distribution plot where I individually point out where the outliers are. And I have various production servers where I show how common you have outliers in data. And very, very common. The neat thing about this uh, visualization is I can share what's happening on our production servers just by showing you a few pings, which have like 200 servers on each. So you can check out my posts on outliers. And I did something similar for multi-modes, multi-modal distributions, uh, and showing the distributions and where the mean is. This is showing distributions, outliers, the mean is in the middle, they're centered. And you can see that sometimes the mean is where you expect, but often the tails pre present these unbalanced distributions. And so the mean as a statistic by itself is misleading. And the last visualization is flame graphs, which I'm doing tomorrow as a talk. And I did a demo earlier today, uh, and it shows lots of things. CPU memory, disk, off CPU, uh, for call stacks. That's it for visualizations, and... Show them the shirt. Show them the shirt? Oh, I'm allowed to show them the shirt? Sure, why not? Okay. Um, it is the best shirt ever. This is a pretty awesome. Scar says it's the best shirt ever. Uh, where did I stick it? You can stand up. Well, I can stand up like this first. So Deidre's having this shirt made. <laughs> if, we, if we had it made in time, we would uh, hand it out right now as part of the, uh, the workshop. But that is, that is pretty fantastic. And so this is, this is my visualization of the uh, this is distribution of latency. And you, you can see where the, the mean is not properly reflecting what's going on. And so it made it into a t-shirt. And they, and they asked, they sent me an email to people making the t-shirt to see if I was giving them permission for the artwork. And so I said, yes. That, that was after they tried to tell me that I was a copyright violator. So then, then they contacted me. That's it for visualizations. That's just a very quick recap. Uh, but tomorrow, uh, Thursday, I'm giving a talk on flame graphs. So you get to see that in more detail if you show up. Uh, Cassidy's giving a talk tomorrow, Wednesday. And I mentioned a couple of the talks. Theo's talking on, on Thursday at 2.45 PM, I think, or thereabouts. And Hillary's giving the Are you really on Thursday? Theo, Wednesday. Sorry, That's Wednesday. Yeah. Sorry, looking at one thing. Now you're Wednesday. But well, you left out me. Oh, did you just giving a talk? When are you giving a talk? I'm on the Women in Advanced Computing panel on Thursday. Mine, I think it's 2 to 3. Is that right? Um, WIA. So. Okay. Your Thursday, 2 o'clock? I think 11 nice. to 12 30. Yeah, that's so You're at 2 o'clock. I think I'm at 2. I'm right. Cool. That's it. Thank you very much for showing up. And. And participating in one of the outcomes, I should get something on GitHub. Thanks to Scott and Orion for helping organize it. Kasky, Theo. I, I came here, I want to get feedback on my model, and you guys got a preview of it. So I'll say what I'm going to say tomorrow in my talk is that tonight I'll be in the pub here around 8 p.m. looking for people to you know, tell me what's wrong with it.